If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter number 6. We're going to begin reading with verse number 16. <clears throat> and we are in a series entitled Hate Speech. We're in a series entitled Hate Speech. This, this, this hate speech is not our speech of what we hate, but it is an understanding, it is a recollection of the things that God hates. I'm not really interested in your politics. I'm not really interested in your perspective. And you should not be interested in my politics, and I, you should not come in here from my perspective. It might, you, might, you might appreciate my approach to the Word of God, but you should not allow temporal uh, or, or, or manly perspectives to make the ultimate decisions of how you live and lead and love and learn in your life. Ultimately, we must go to the source that is immutable, unchanging, and it is relevant at every life stage, in every stage of history, and that is the Word of God. That's why I can't afford to get up here and not use the Word of God. And the truth of the matter is, you should not go to a church that does not give you the Word of God. And the moment that I begin to stand up here and all you ever hear is my opinion, you need to stand up, throw that finger up in the air, and begin to walk out the door and don't ever return. Because there's only one thing that is going to remain through this history and this existence of earth, and that is the infallible word of God, period. And I am absolutely blown away as I spend more and more time with 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25 year olds, how biblically illiterate they are. They, they can't tell you what's in the word of God unless somebody preached it and they remembered it. And that's not their fault, that's our fault because we haven't done a very good job of teaching and training and equipping. I went to this thing growing up called Sunday school. And I can go do conferences and camps today and preach the story of Jonah and the well and kids sit there and they're looking at me as if they're hearing it for the very first time. That is not the responsibility of the church, that's the responsibility of me, the parent. The church is supposed to complement what it is that I'm saying, but they should not be the supplement of my job. And, and, and so I'm challenged today over and over again to make sure that I give you the word of God. Well, the truth of the matter is I have nothing better to give you. I am not these guys who have great opinions and thoughts. Save God opening up his book and giving me revelation. That's the only reason that I have anything worthy of saying is because I'm trying to speak his words and make it relevant in our lives. And we're in this, this series entitled Hate Speech. And I just want you to know that there is a God who loves. There is a God who, um, who has agape love, unconditional love. There is a God who loves you no matter where you are. There is a God who loves you no matter what you've done. He, there is a God who loves you no matter what you've thought. There's a God who loves you whether you even acknowledge that he even exists or not. There is a God who died and gave his life for, for men like Adolf Hitler. There, there's a God, and the same God who loves you is the same God who loved Hitler, who's the same God that those of us that will remember Jeffrey Dahmer, who would murder people and then eat them. He, he, he would cannibalize them and eat them. And the same God died for me, died for him, and gave his life for him. And if they bowed their knees in a surrender to God because of the Holy Spirit drawing them, then they're just as saved today as I am today because God's love is unbelievable, it's undeniable, and it is unconditional. But just because it's unconditional, believable and undeniable and unconditional doesn't mean that a loving God doesn't hate some things. Well, God is love. Yes, he is love, but that doesn't mean he accepts everything he loves. And in this, oh, I got to be careful because I'll get on my soapbox. In this society that we live in, especially in North Carolina right now, I can still love you and not accept everything you do. I love my son. I care for my son. As a matter of fact, only his mother can rival me with the kind of love that I have for my son. But just because I love him doesn't mean I give him everything he wants and let him have his way. And if I did, he would be playing NBA 2016 24 hours a day, seven days a week, only to break to go use the bathroom and eat more of my food to go back up there to do it again. 
and I love him and I care for him, but that doesn't mean I accept. Every, there is a difference between love and acceptance. And do not, ex, do not question my love because I don't accept everything you want. You're in the dark trying to see what you're trying to tell me in the darkness of your life how to walk in the light. And here I am in the light trying to explain to you how to get here. And you're tripping over, oh God. And North Carolina's tripping right now. And they're tripping over, they're stumbling over things in the darkness because they're so busy making fun of people that are walking in the, in the light. Because I love you, it doesn't mean I accept everything about you. And just because I do not accept everything that you want doesn't mean I don't love you. Somebody talk back to me. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to challenge us with justice here in a minute. Here we are in hate speech. These, God, God who loves you, undeniable, undisputable, unconditional, says there are seven things, that, six things I hate. But when you put the seventh with it, it is, an, it is damnable to me. These are the things, it's damnable to me, these things. I hate them with a, I hate them with a passion. Seven of them are damnable. Here we go. The Lord hates six things. In fact, seven are an abomination. That's what the word abomination means, damnable. It is damnable to him. Number one is a lying, it is an arrogant eyes or a proud look. Pride he hates. He can love you and hate pride. He can love you and hate the pride in you. You understand what I'm saying? A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that plots evil schemes, feet that run eagerly to uh, feet that eager eager to that are eager to run to evil, a lying witness who gives false testimony, and one who stirs up discord or sows trouble among the brethren. My son, keep your father's commands and do not reject your mother's teaching. Always bind them around your heart. Tie them around your neck. And when you walk here and there, they will guide you. And when you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you wake up, they will talk to you. Watch this. For a command is a lamp, teaching is a light, and corrective discipline, it is the way to life. I read this entire thought over and over to you every week because I want you to get the context with the content. These are the things the Lord hates. Se these seven things God hates with a passion. And today I want to talk about feet that are eager to run to evil. Feet that are eager to run to evil. I, I have to be very honest with you. This one was a challenge. Because I can preach all this other stuff, but we're talking about feet that are eager to run. To, what, what would possess someone to see evil taking place and want to, they're eager to run to it. Bless you. They're eager to run to it. They, they see evil over at a distance and they say, Now, if that was Krispy Kreme hot and now sign, he gone. <laughs> and maybe for some of us, that is evil. <laughs> to, to watch evil. And, and I'm not talking about like, it's one thing to rubberneck. Y'all know what rubbernecking is? Get in a wreck on the interstate. Someone's in a wreck on the interstate, and you can tell it's a bad, it's just bad. And the majority of the people that are passing by will slow down because they want to see what has happened. And I have seen people get in a wreck watching a wreck because they're rubbernecking. I'm not talking about people who are rubbernecking with evil. I'm talking about people who recognize, wait a minute, there's evil over there. Let me come be a part of it. With the exception of maybe Roderick, I don't think anyone here would run to evil. <laughs> uh, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. 
I would say Tony, but she married it, and so it's different. But I'm teasing. Love, the, love that family. Love that family. I'm not talking about rubbernecking. I'm talking about making a conscious decision to go towards it. This is what God hates. And I want you to understand, we talked about a heart that devises wicked schemes two weeks ago. Your feet will always go where your heart always longs for. Your feet will always go in the direction your heart is longing. That's why he told us that a heart that devises wicked schemes, that is, that is before feet that run towards evil because it takes your heart to desire it before your feet will ever walk in it. The Bible says it this way, that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I am my inward desires. My outward manifestation is a result of my inward longings. Run to evil. At the root of evil is this, is this person called the devil. He's, he's called devil. Do you know who the devil is? He's the father of evil. As a matter of fact, I heard a preacher say one time, if you take away the D in devil, you get evil. And then he went on because he was a cute preacher. He said, if you take away the E, you get vile. Because once you get evil from the devil, it becomes a vile, wicked thing. And he said, if you take away the D, you get evil. If you take away the D and the E, you get vile. But if you take away the V, you get ill. Because that vile, evil devil will make you sick in your spirit. He'll make you sick in your body. He'll make you sick in your mind. If you take away the D, the E, the V, you'll get ill. It'll make you sick. And then he got real happy. And he stretches his little bit. He said, but if you take away the D, E, V, I, I, and I, all you get is ill. And that's where you're going to end up if you don't stay true to God. Uh, how to preach. Take away the D, you get evil. Take away the E, you get vile. Take away the V, you get ill. And take away the I, and you go to hell. <laughs> yeah. Some of you going to use that tomorrow. Just pay your tithes. <laughs> so the question is, why would someone eagerly run to evil? Before I can answer the question why, let's really define what evil is. Evil is when you live backwards. I'm in the slow class. Evil is when you, okay, you spell live backwards and it's, some of you didn't drink coffee this morning. Evil is when you live backwards. It is the, uh, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And when you choose opposite of this life more abundantly, you are walking towards live backwards, evil. You see, it's not a decision of whether you're good or not. The question is, are you in the beloved or not? Because anything outside of the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, you are in the direction moving towards evil. I struggled with this, this message until I found Isaiah chapter 59, 1 through 7. And all of a sudden, God encapsulated from me a people. I, ironically enough, it was the people of Judah that the prophet was prophesied to. And when I saw that the prophet was speaking directly to Judah, I realized that we were in a moment where the Holy Spirit needed to warn us as a body today. Listen to what he says. The prophet is speaking to the people. He says, surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. In other words, the issue we're dealing with today is not a God problem. If you're not being saved, it's not because God can't reach you. It's because you keep moving when he goes after you. 
If you're not being heard by God today, it's not because he's deaf. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short and his ear is not too dull to hear. Watch this. But your iniquities have separated you from God. <laughs> you have encapsulated yourself in a soundproof room. And you're trying to have a conversation with God through a window on Sunday, but he can't hear anything because the volume of your sin is screaming louder than your cry. Separated you from God. And your sins have indeed hidden his face from you. Watch this. Come here. Come here. Come here, Pastor Barbara. Come here. Noah, come here, son. Stand there. Stand, face me. Face me. Noah's face is still there. But his face is being eclipsed by the magnitude of goings. <laughs> I wasn't being stupid. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. He's over here going, oh, grande gringo, here we go. <laughs> I didn't mean that at all. I wasn't even thinking like that. That's funny, though. It's not that no, no one no longer has a face. It's that now that I'm looking, I'm having to look through something I cannot look through to try to see it. And it wasn't Noah's fault that Goins got in front of him. It is because I called Goins from his seat and I placed him in front as a barrier to Noah's face. Do you hear what I'm saying? Noah didn't call Goins to get between me and him. I chose to bring Goins and put him between me and God. In other words, what I'm saying to you is it may be not God's fault you can't see him. Intentionally, this is the warning to Judah from the prophet Isaiah today. And I have to believe this is a word in season for all of us to, to recognize and to hear. It may be that we've just allowed our addiction to hide his face from us. It's not his addiction, it's mine. And I've decided I'm going to put his, my addiction, between seeing his face and me. My pride, my ego, oh, watch this the pain of my past. And so every time I lift my hands to see the face of God, all I do is see the face of my pain. Your sins have hidden his face from you. Watch this. So that, well, I'll go back. So that he will not hear. Okay, come here again. Now this time, face him and put both of your hands over his ears. Face me, son. And just start la 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 la. <laughs> that wasn't the Holy Ghost. That's just. just Just start screaming at him. Just start screaming at him. Just, just start screaming. What are you? I sound like you had a hernia. I didn't know what was going on for a minute. Yeah, Jesus, we should have practiced, obviously. Just, just, talk out, just talk really loud to him. God, I need you. God, I want you. I, your presence is heaven to me and it's not that he can't hear me because I'm not saying it it's because my sin is so much louder than my worship it's clogging up his hearing my sin is like cotton balls in his ears because watch this God can't get past your sin he can get past your past but he cannot get past your sin 
That's why it must be drowned by the blood of Jesus. Did you hear what I'm saying? You're good now. <laughs> You're, that's terrible. I'm not paying you this week. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I should have called Kelly up here. Uh, do something with him when you get him home. And nothing pleasant. Verse number three. For your hand, watch this. The reason why God can't hear you and the reason why you can't see God is because your hands are stained with blood. Your fingers with guilt. Your lips have falsely spoken falsely. And your tongue mutters wicked things. If the only thing that ever comes out of your mouth is negative and wicked and not God lifting, I warn you, there is a correlation between, oh, I'm about to get ahead of myself, the negative things out of your mouth and the void we have with our interaction with God. Number four, no one calls for justice. No one calls for justice. No one is calling for justice. And no one pleads a case with integrity. Tell the lawyer, whatever he has to do, just get me out of this ticket. It's not that we're not pleading cases. We're just not going to do it with integrity. You know you were driving 900 miles an hour. And when the cop pulled you over, you started fussing, some of you, cussing the cop out because you were 55 miles over the speed limit and he caught you and now you want to get the lawyer to try to read. <laughs> he didn't read me my Miranda rights. No, he should have shot you with a laser gun and put you in the ground for a minute. Because we don't want to plead the case with integrity. It is, so, it is so abundantly clear when you see a husband and a wife going into a divorce court. Whatever you can say. He, he yelled at me one time. And, and all of a sudden, the lawyer spirals it into this mag unbelievable abuse case. He was verbally abusive to me. and you know You punched him in the face. He didn't talk about that. But he said, you look big in them jeans. while you were pregnant <laughs> and now you go sue him for okay i need to shut up i'm getting ahead of him. they rely on empty arguments oh god have you ever been in an argument with someone and they just they, they don't even know what they're talking about okay there's three of us the rest of you you're probably this an empty argument they they rely on it if I can distract you with everything you did 10 years ago, you won't remember to be mad at me with what I did today. They utter lies. They conceive trouble. Watch this. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. Uh-oh. Feet that eagerly run to evil. They give birth to evil. Hmm. Like a mother running to the cry of a child. We run to what we have given birth to. Oh, God. Here's why I'm going to mess with you. I've been proud of these boxes so far. This is good. You see the holes? Can you see the holes in the box? That's breathing room. That's all that is. Verse number five. They hatch the eggs of vipers and spin a spider's web. Some of you already know where I'm going. All of a sudden, this is the worst Christmas present you have ever thought of in your life. Whoever eats their eggs will die, and when one is broken, an adder is hatched, which is a baby viper. Their cobwebs are useless for clothing. They cannot cover themselves with what they make. Their deeds are evil deeds, and acts of violence are in their hands. Verse number seven, here it is. 
Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. So why would someone eagerly run? I submit to you answer number one is they're listening to the wrong people. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 1. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. Do not walk in the way of them. Keep your foot from their path. Watch this. For their feet run to evil and they make haste to shed blood. The first thing that will begin to move me towards eagerly running towards evil is listening to the wrong people. First Corinthians 15, 33. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. If this was a youth group, I would say it this way. Show me your friends and I will show you your future. Listening to the wrong people. Who has your ear? Who has your ear? There, there's a friend of mine. Actually, he, for, for many years, especially in my college years, he was a mentor of mine. And we would travel while I was in Bible college. We would travel every weekend, and we would spend the entire summer months gone doing ministry all around the country. He had a wife and a beautiful child, one child at that time, son. Loved Disney movies. It was unbelievable. Couldn't even hardly talk, but he could quote every Disney movie. It was unbelievable. We would be out ministering the gospel, traveling all the world, watching God move. I remember services where, where the power of God would be, and, and we would lay hands and pray for the first person, and there would be a line of people all the way around the room, a room about this size. We laid hands on the first person and prayed for them. The first person was slain in the Spirit, and one by one, the Holy Spirit hit every one of them, and the entire, girls would fall this way, and guys would fall, so you knew it was decency and in order. But, but we watched hundreds of kids fall out underneath the power of the Holy Spirit of God all the way around the room because this was what was taking place. We were watching signs and wonders and miracles. We were watching people get saved, redeemed, restored, and healed. We were watching all of these things make manifestation. But the problem is, is while we were doing all of this, his wife became friends with someone who had just had an affair on her husband. And what was the cheerleader back home because of the friend? The friend began to sow, you deserve better than this. Why are you putting up with him? He loves those boys more than he loves you. He cares about his ministry more than he does his marriage. You deserve better. We ought to go to the club tonight. And it didn't happen the first time she asked, but for months after months after months of pursuit after pursuit after pursuit, she began in a moment of her own weakness to listen to the wrong person because sinners Love company. And your success is an indictment against their failure. Okay. Listening to the wrong people. Number two, and I'm just going to leave it here because we're going to take a minute here. Number two, why would someone eagerly run to e evil? They started playing with spiders and snakes. We'll say this with the last. Come here, big fella. You bite me and I will... Stay. Are you dead? What's going on? They started playing with spiders. 
That's about all the affection you're going to get today. Isaiah 59, 5. They hatch the eggs of vipers and spin a spider's web. The people of Judah begin to play with spiders. It's one thing to have one in your garage. It's another thing to make it a pet. It, it, it's one thing to see it and want to step on it. It's another thing to go, here, kitty, kitty. Here, come here, kitty, kitty. But it wasn't just spiders. Yep, should have went to Judah Kids today. <laughs> we should hang on. Man. Hang on. Hey. Oh, I was just kidding. It's fake, man. Y'all calm down. Y'all calm down. It's fake. I relax. <laughs> it's, it's look, man. Y'all, y'all, Y'all need to relax. <laughs> Tisha got the shoe out. <laughs> y'all, it, it's fake. <laughs> I was really going to play it up, but I thought uh, some of y'all already about to wet the seats, and we'd have to mop, and it ain't going to work. It's fake. Y'all good? Everybody good? Y'all feel better? <laughs> she took her shoe off. <laughs> I love my job, man. <laughs> Kelly, you jumped. That was funny. <laughs> I ain't never seen the Holy Ghost hit you the way you just jumped. That's, just let Jesus, let go, let God. They started playing with spiders and snakes. They started surrounding themselves with spiders and snakes. Now, the spiritual symbolism of a spider is a hypocrite. I'll give it to you. What they trust, Job 8, 14, what they trusted is fragile. What they rely on is a spider's web. You will begin to eagerly run towards God when you trust people who have no substance for you to stand on. They saw a spider's web. I love the way part of the verse says, I just didn't have time. They took the cobwebs of spiders and tried to make clothes out of it. They tried, watch this, they tried to cover their shame in the, in the, with something that has no substance. Because a hypocrite, a hypocrite, one that cannot speak with true substance is too shallow to cover shame. This is the problem of a hypocrite. They're too shallow to cover shame. But like the sons of Noah when they found their father drunk and they walked in backwards so that they could put a cloak over his shame. They wanted to cover his shame and not look at it themselves while one of the other sons was looking and gawking and he was cursed because of it. Watch this. It is the hypocrite that we play with that eventually is going to bite us. Snakes symbolize deceptive, poisonous people. Why will my feet eagerly run towards evil? Is when not when I start playing just with hypocrites. Do you know what I mean by playing with hypocrites? You know they're a liar. You know they're a hypocrite. You know they're fake. But you still go to lunch with them anyway. Oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You, you know that what they said to you two days ago, they're now telling the same story in front of other people that you're in front of, and the story has greatly changed. And you're still playing with, you're playing with a spider. And you're either going to get entangled in its web, or it's going to bite you. 
and then started playing with vipers. This is a replica of a black snake. Start making pets out of poisonous people. You, oh, God have mercy. You know he's full of venom, but you're dating him anyway. Oh, God have mercy. Going to lunch by ourselves again. You know. You know. Everything that comes into contact with him or her dies. But you play in with them anyway. You become a snake handler. Poisonous, deadly people. I'm going to dig. Can I dig just a little deeper? They can't get out of their addiction, but they're going to try to help you out of yours. Be careful. They're full of venom, and they're going to deposit it in you too. And you're trying to be a professional snake handler. And they can't deal with their junk. All right, let me give it to you. Genesis 3.13. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is, this done? What, th what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent, the snake, deceived me. And I ate. Here it is, a fall, a Lucifer, the devil. <laughs> Evil, vile, ill, going to ill person. damned and because she got into a conversation slowly but surely she became just as evil vile ill and on her way to L too and here's why here's the problem and Lisa you can come like spiders and vipers Hypocrites and deceptive people lay eggs too. Oh, I got you. I got you. I hear you. But you don't understand. He's my boo. That's fine. Because what you didn't realize is when you went to get him something out of the cabinet, he laid eggs on your couch. But you don't understand. We're friends. We're compatible. We got a lot of chemistry. Well, what exactly is it that you have in common? You both have the same ex? Or are you now parenting something that he gave birth to? Oh, I'm, it is, yes. 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 And now you're the surrogate mother of something that he laid. Because you started playing with vipers. You know, the longer I'm married, the more like me she becomes. And that is a beautiful thing in some ways. And the longer I'm married, the more like her I'm becoming. And that is a beautiful thing in some ways. I mean, I'm not going to wear high heels or nothing. You understand what I'm saying? The longer we're together, the more alike we become. Because what's in her starts to get in me. And what's in me begins to manifest in her. And if you're not careful, you'll be hooking up with vipers, and then you'll become a viper yourself. They lay eggs. Let me, let me go to this. Num point number three underneath snakes and spiders. Adders are hatched. You see, it's one thing for you to lay an egg. It's another thing for you to allow the time for that egg to be incubated and given birth to. This is good. Those of you that are meat eaters, you eat eggs all the time. I mean, I love eggs. How many of you love eggs? You love eggs? Chicken. I'm talking about chicken eggs. You love eggs? I'm telling you, I love chicken. I thank God for chicken. Fried chicken, marinated chicken, grilled chicken. 
It doesn't matter. I thank God for chicken. I like chicken so much that I'll go to Chick-fil-A and I'll eat a chicken biscuit and I'll tell them to put a baby chicken on top of it. You know, it, and I just... I love chicken so much that, that I'll go to a burger joint and tell them to put a baby egg, um, a baby chicken on top of it. You, y'all right? I mean, I love it. Thank God for chicken. That's why I have fat problems. I, lo- I love chicken. I thank God for chicken. But I think it was my daughter told me that the reason why you'll never see a chick come from an egg that you would see in your refrigerator is because it hasn't had something called a rooster come and make it transition from being what you see in the grocery store to fully developed. I got babies I'm trying not to say too much. You understand? The difference is one is unfertilized and one is fertilized. The difference between having a poisonous person in your life laying eggs that never materializes is whether or not you're going to fertilize it. But when you fertilize and incubate the egg that they have laid in your life, sooner or later that thing becomes a viper for you. And instead of you fighting one snake, now you're fighting two. Psalm 40, verse 3. They make their tongues as sharp as serpents. The poison of vipers, adders, is on their lips. And now you're using the poison from the child you have given birth to as lipstick. So how does this happen? Well, I think we find it in uh, Isaiah 59, verse 5, where we talk about the playing with spiders and snakes. But I think verse number 4 answers the question of why does this happen? Listen to what it says. No one calls for justice. No one pleads his case with integrity. They rely on empty arguments and speak lies. They conceive trouble and they give birth to evil. All of these things bring you to the point of birthing. Watch it. Like contractions of a mother. The first contraction is we stop calling for justice. At what point is it no longer going to be okay for everything? How much are we going to give away before it's no longer enough? When is the spirit of Popeye the Sailor Man going to sit on us and we're going to look at him and say, I've had all I can stand and I can't stand no more. I've taken all I'm going to take out of this. You have now awoken a sleeping giant. Come here. Let me tell you really what I think about this situation. No one's calling for justice anymore. While you're screaming equality, what you're really screaming is shut up. No one pleads his case with integrity. I hit it for a minute. We have been trained to not tell the whole truth. Even in our homes. We get, we're, we're in a conversation with our spouse or, or our friend or our boyfriend or girlfriend. Or we're in this conversation with people that are in our lives on a daily basis, our parents or whatever. We're in these conversations and we don't want to tell the whole truth. We want to tell just enough of it that we still stay safe. It's integrity anymore. They rely on empty arguments and speak lies. They conceive trouble. The problem is, when you do not call for justice, when you do not plead your case with integrity, when you rely on empty arguments and you begin to lie, conception of trouble is conceived. Trouble's conceived. And the problem is, when you conceive trouble, you do not give birth to trouble. You hear what I'm saying? When you conceive trouble, trouble is not what you give birth to. You give birth to evil. What was conceived trouble is now born evil. Because when it's conceived as trouble, when it's developed, it's evil. And now you're standing there holding something you never imagined. And your life 
is now backwards. Today, I think this is a prophetic challenge. For the people of Judah. Above all else, guard our hearts, for out of it flows the issues of life. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And I think God is sounding the alarm for at least one of us in this room. I know there's more. Because you're starting to listen to the wrong people. All of oh God have mercy. I feel this thing in my spirit. You're listening to the wrong people. You knew they were wrong. That's why God separated you from them. Now all of a sudden they're calling you back. All of a sudden they have out of the blue friended you again. God broke that thing off of your life and now here you are now that all of a sudden out of the blue they shoot you a text or invite you to lunch careful it's not Halloween but you might be playing with spiders and snakes they used to have this old adage when I was growing up they called them a snake in the oh you've heard it too You me tell you what I do to snakes in the grass? I have a 410 shotgun with no uh, stock. Bam! I shoot it all day. In the neighborhood, in the city, I don't know. A snake is supposed to die. I just believe, I got, now I got an amen. You ought to give it an offering right here. Snakes are supposed to die. It killed us in the garden. It might as well die every chance it gets here. You know what I'm saying? Be careful. I, I don't know why God's speaking this, but I feel it. I, I sense it's prophetic today. All of a sudden, you got things, you got relationships that are coming. You, you better be careful. I hear the warning of the Spirit of God. All of us, they're constantly, you're being enticed back. All of a sudden, you've been moving. All of us, out of the blue, all of a sudden, and what you thought was a person is really a spider. And what, and what you thought was a person was really a snake. Let me tell you, you need to get your Holy Ghost shotgun out. You need to cock that joker back one time. And you need to bust them right in the head so they don't have, you understand what I'm saying? You, you better go. I just hear the Holy Spirit of God sounding the bell, sounding the alarm. I, listen, I had this day planned for a long time, but I believe with all of my heart somebody's hearing me this morning. Somebody's listening to this podcast again. You better hear the Holy Ghost and what he is trying to say to you. You better be careful. You're going to start playing with spiders. And that juggle going to bite you. Or worse, it's going to lay thousands in your house. Stand with me all over the room. I have plenty more message, but I don't have enough time. I was going to take you into Numbers, the children of Israel. When they began to complain, talking to one another how they would have been better in Egypt where, where they had garlic and onions and all these things. And, and now what was a miracle called manna, they now despise. What was the blessing and provision of God, they now despise. And they would rather go back into captivity. And they called them rabble. What it means is, is a mixed multitude. That's what it actually translates as. There's this whole mix of multitude. In other words, you've got some people saying this and some people saying this and some people saying this and some people saying this. And, and they're telling you to be this and they're telling you to be this and they're telling you to be this. And some people tell you to go here and some people tell you to go here and some people telling you to go here and some people are saying this and saying this and saying this and you got all this and and it's all confusion but you know that God is not the author of confusion and they start complaining what was confusion turned into complaining and when complaining took place they began to actually be bitter towards God so here's what God did God sent vipers and went and bit every one of them and killed every one of the complainers you see poison is always going to get in the complainer 
That's why you have to guard your mouth. You have to guard your words. Life or death is in your mouth. And it's not life or death to someone. It's life and death to you. And you're spewing it then on somebody else and it's coming. You're swallowing it while you're saying it. But God's redemption, Numbers chapter 11, I think 21 now. God said, I want you to take a stick. And I want you, hear me that son. And I want you to tie a snake around it. And when the people are infirmed, tell them to look at the stick that's holding the snake. And when they look, don't touch it. But when they look upon it, they will be healed. When they look at the stick that is holding the snake, when they put their eyes to the stick holding the snake, they will be healed. And I just want to remind everybody today that, that this stick that is holding the snake, this stick that is holding the poison, the stick that took the death, that has keys to death, hell in the grave, the, the, the stick that took the sin and the shame of the world, the stick, that the thing that is victorious over every work of the enemy, that same stick is the cross of Jesus Christ. And as long as you and I cast our vision towards it, we can be healed, we can be delivered, we can be set free, and no viper can destroy us today I want to do two things I want number one the Holy Spirit to have a minute so play for me play for me. I want the Holy Spirit to have a minute to expose the wicked things oh evil excuse me father in the name of Jesus expose the evil things if it's music expose it if it's TV Expose it. If it's relationships, expose it. If it's people, expose it. If it's addictions, expose it. If it's mindsets, expose it. If it's books that we are exposed, expose the evil things. Expose every spider and every snake that's trying to burrow into our homes. Expose every spider and every snake that has tried to cast itself, kill the cobweb in our cars. I pray that you would open up our eyes to see. I want you to show every nook and every cranny, every corner of our house. Oh God, come in here with a broom and sweep the house today. I'm asking you to sweep the house and make it clean. I'm telling you, sweep the house today, Lord. Whatever it is, whoever it is, whatever the thought is, I pray that you sweep the house today. Sweep the house and get rid of every spider. Sweep the house and get rid of every... Sweep the house today. Sweep the house of Judah. But sweep my house, the Walter's house. Sweep the Boozer house. Sweep the Land's house. Sweep every house. In the sweet Ortiz, I want you to sweep every house today. Expose every spider, expose every snake, expose every work of the enemy. I pray, Lord, that you wouldn't even expose the spider and the snake, but I want to see every egg that's been laid, every egg laid in my son's bedroom, every egg laid in my daughter's bedroom, every egg laid in my garage. I want to see every single egg that the enemy has tried to play. I pray that you would expose every spider, every snake, and every egg. And I tell you by the power of of the blood of Jesus Christ. We say you are exposed and you are expelled. You are removed and we cast you out in the name. In the name. In the name. In the name. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody in the spirit, sweep your house right now. Sweep your house right now. We sweep the house of sickness. Sickness, you got to get out the house. Depression, you got to get out the house. Poverty, you got to get out the house. Addictions, I'm sweeping you out right now. Oh. Jesus. Jesus. Last thing and then we're done. I want you to get your eyes on the cross right now all over this room. Get your eyes on the cross. 
Get your eyes on the redemption of your salvation, the one who was slain, the lamb that was slain so the snakes could not stay. Come on, all over. I want you to speak worship and praise to your redemption, to your salvation right now. Come on, come on, right now, all over this room. Come on, lift your voice like a trumpet. I want you to give him the glory. I want you to give him the honor. I want you to give him the praise. I want you to give him thanksgiving, both now and forever. God, we honor you. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you. Uh, Here is my hands. Here is my heart. Here is my soul. It all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. right now do that right now lift it high to you here and now forever every single plan oh we extend our hands to you we extend our hearts to you we send our love to you and give you praise. We send our hands. We send our hands to you. We send our hearts to you. We send our love to you and give you praise. Say that again. We send our hands. We send our hands to you. We send our hearts. We send our hearts to you. We send our love. We send our love to you and give you praise. Say that again. We extend our hands. We extend our heart. We extend our love. We give you and give you praise. We extend our hearts. We extend our hearts to you. We extend our love to you and give you praise. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. We extend our hands to you. One more time, say it. We send our hands to you. Yes, we do. We send our hearts to you. We send our love to you. Here. And give you praise. Here. Here is my hand. Here is my heart. Here is my heart. And mine. Here is my soul.
Come say, I'm yours. 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 It all belongs. It all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Father, it is our prayer today that you help us to be diligent enough to sweep our houses. And I don't mean our home physically, a physical address, but everything that is under the auspice of our authorities. I pray, Lord, that you would help us recognize where we have been snake handling. Help us to recognize the spiders that we have allowed to nest under the auspice of our authority and our coverings. And I pray, Lord, that the boots, the shoes, with the preparation of the gospel of peace would wage war with the things that the enemy has planted to rob us of the peace that our feet are slid into. Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost in this moment. For our feet, if they are laced with the gospel of peace, cannot eagerly run towards evil. Because peace is not in evil. God, help us not to run out of our shoes. Mm. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, turn around, son. You're living backwards. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I hear him saying, son, you're living backwards. You're going the wrong way. Repentance is required. Repentance doesn't say I'm sorry. Repentance says I'm done. It is a 180 degree turn. Life is in the other direction. I hear the Lord say, oh God, life is in the other direction. You're living backwards, son. Oh, God, I know you. I formed you. I chose you. I called you. You are mine. You were given to me by your mother. You're living backwards, son. You're going the wrong direction. Hear the words of a loving father who wants his son back home. You know my word. You have experienced the fullness of my presence. You have been trained in the things of the Spirit all of your life. Like Samuel, the Lord says, I have kept you in my presence. And you have chosen to walk in the other direction. Son, I love you. Come back home.
I want you to lift your hands right now all over this room. In honor of the Lord, I am speaking a word of knowledge. The Lord has brought you here today to get that word. And you know who I'm, I see you and my eyes are closed but I'm looking dead at you. I can call you by name. But I don't have to because he's calling you by purpose. Father, thank you for the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation. My heart, my mind, my soul is yours. My heart, my mind, my soul is yours. My heart, my mind, my soul is yours. I'm yours. My heart, my mind, my soul is yours. My heart, my mind, my soul is yours. My heart, my mind, my soul, I'm yours. I'm yours. My heart, my heart, my mind, my soul is yours. My heart, my mind, my soul is yours. My heart. My soul, I'm yours, I'm yours, my heart, my heart, my mind, my soul. we thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy over our lives. We thank you that we are seated in heavenly places by Christ Jesus. We thank you that you are taking us from glory to glory. We thank you that your word is something we can stand on no matter the vicissitudes of life. And we ask you, Spirit of the living God, to let us walk out with boldness and courage so that we may expose the works of the enemy and expel it from our lives. Holy Spirit, turn the lights on in the dark place so that we might know how to clean the nestings of the enemy. According to your word in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 11, I bless your people today with your words, and I say may the God of your fathers make you a thousand times more than what you are. And may he fulfill every promise that he has given you. We ask these things in the name above every name, the name of Jesus. And all of God's children said amen. Amen. You have just seen the word of God. I pray come alive. And I don't want to leave this moment. I didn't want to leave you uh, leaving this video without a moment for you to maybe make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life. It's real simple. All you have to do is ask him to come into your life, believe that He is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and confess your need from Him and the fact that you've been far from Him. And today I pray that that would happen and take place in your life. But before you leave, I also wanted to do one thing that we do at the conclusion of every service, which is speak the Deuteronomy 111 blessing over your life. And I say, may the God of your fathers make you a thousand times more than what you are. 
and fulfill every promise that He has given you. We love you. God bless you. We hope you check out more videos. And if there's anything we can ever do, please email us at info at